Okay, this is 4.3 of algebra. So a nonlinear function is a function whose graph is not a line and not a part of a line. So you can see these three here, these are all linear functions because they're lines, right? I could put a ruler up against that and it would fit it. This one is not because it's a curve. This one also has a curve in it. This one, yes, this is a straight line, but they're not the same. There's two straight lines actually, but they're not one continuous straight line, right? I can't put a ruler over top of that and hit both of them, right? If I put my ruler here, it would cover those, but I'd be forgetting these ones. Okay, so if we're given a table and asked to say if it's a function, as asked if the function is linear or nonlinear, we can graph it to figure it out. So clearly you can see here this is a curve, and this is a straight line. So this one is a line, so it's linear. This one is not a line, so it is nonlinear. So let's try it ourselves. So I'm going to graph this. I went up by sixteenths on the left, and I wrote in their um, equivalence fractions in there. So one goes at one half, and two and one quarter. Three goes with one eighth. Four goes with one sixteenth. And you can see here we're starting to get a bit of a curve, right? So this is nonlinear. I could not put a straight line to it. Oh, actually, let me show you that. So nonlinear. I've got a straight line tool on here. So if I connect this point and try to draw my line, it doesn't hit everything. Right. Okay, representing patterns and nonlinear functions. Okay, so first we've got a cube, oops, first we've got cubes that have just one cube, right? It makes up one cube is one cube. Sorry, you'll see what I mean here. So this cube is made up of two little cubes on each side, right? And this one has three cubes lined up. And we'll continue that. So that's already filled into our table. So if we keep the pattern going, they drew it down here. And we need to figure out what the total blocks would be. So when we're finding the area of a 3D figure of a cube, it's length times width times height. Which in this case, since we are looking at cubes and not just like rectangles, that's the same thing as s to the third. So 1 to the third, 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. 2 to the third, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. 3 to the third, 3 times 3 times 3, well 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So for 4, you do 4 to the third is 4 times 4 times 4 which is 16 times 4, which is 64. And we do the same thing with 5. So 5 to the third is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 25 times 5, which is 125. And they filled that in here. So. Our equation then, as I kind of wrote up here, we can write it with x and y's down here, is y equals x cubed. So in words, the total number of blocks y is the number, is the cube, so cube just means to the third power, is a cube of the number of blocks on one edge. And they graph it in a table, or graph it in a graph over here. Okay. So, the table shows the number of new branches in each figure of the pattern below. What is the pattern you can use to complete the table? Okay, so the first thing I get is, when I plug in 1, I get 3. When I plug in 2, I get 9. When I plug in 3, I get 27. How about I try 
Shall I try drawing another one? Let's see. Actually, I think this might take me a little bit more. So this is just what they already had in the third thing. Right, that's just what was on number three. And if I go through, and I'm gonna switch colors here so you can see it. And I had to put three things on each of these. So this is gonna be a pretty big number, right? It's not like I'm just multiplying by three. Three, six, nine, 12, right? That doesn't go up very quickly, but this is going up by a lot. So I could continue doing that and we could count. Or I could just tell you, when numbers get big really quickly, we're working with exponential equations. So something that has an exponent. In this case, our equation is y equals three to the x. Because when I plug in one, three to the one is just three. When I plug in two, three squared is nine. When I plug in three, three to the third is 27. So it fits my graph. So, whoops. Let's plug in four and five. If you wanted, you could finish the picture to make sure that you could check your answer, but just making sure that it fits with the graph and with, or excuse me, with the equation and with these points, you'd be good. So y equals three to the fourth. That is three times three times three times three, four times. And that gives me 81. So 81 goes in there. And three to the fifth. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 gives me 243. Okay, <clears throat> so there it is on my table. So in words, I take 3 to the power of how many, um, the number of figures. That's hard to say in words, isn't it? So take 3 to the power of the number of figure. Because that's what they're calling this number down here. Right, they labeled this the number of figure. So they're talking about the numbers down here at the bottom. Okay, and then I need to draw a graph. So I'm gonna erase this guy over here. It's gonna be a bit just of a sketch. So one, two, three, four, five. I need to go all the way from three to 243. So let's go up by 50s. I'm just going to estimate on my graph. So one goes with three. That's going to be like basically almost on the line. Two goes with nine. Again, that's pretty low. Three goes with 27. That's about halfway up. <clears throat> Four goes with 81. So that's around there. <clears throat> then 5 goes with 243, which we'll say is around there. So you can see, remember when we were drawing that picture, it was getting really, really big. There were a lot of lines I was drawing. You can see how quickly this is going to go up. Approximately there. It gets steep really quickly and it's going to go up really fast. Okay, writing a rule to describe a nonlinear function. So this is a little bit of a guessing game as well. Remember, if numbers are going up pretty, pretty quickly, um, it's likely to be exponential, or it is going to be exponential of some sorts. Either the number is at the bottom and the, the exponent has the variable, or the variable can be in the bottom and then a number up in the top. But So there's an example if you want to go through it. Um, they guessed y equals 2x, 
they guessed y equals x plus 1, and they guessed y equals 2 to the x. Anything that would work for this ordered pair. And then they said, okay, do any of those work for this ordered pair? And do they work for all these other ones down here? So we're going to do that same thing down here. So looking at, if I was just looking at this first ordered pair, I could say, oh, well, y equals x would work. Right, I could plug in 1 and 1 equals 1. Um, but if I look ahead, that's not going to work here. So I've got 1 with 1, 2 with 4, 3 goes with 9, 5 goes with 25. Oh, I missed the 4 in there. 4 goes with 16. I forgot to put that on my table. So we can see these should be common. You should be recognizing these. This is y equals x squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. So, y equals x squared is my answer. And there's your homework.